is gonna take you back to the kitchen to take her to talk about those foods those foods that you're eating <coughs> Um, yeah, this is a video where I'm gonna talk to you about foods and myths and urban legends about f foods and nutrition. Uh, first, I'm gonna start by a disclaimer about my own knowledge and my own health. If you're not interested in that and wanna go straight to the science and facts, then jump to this timestamp, I'm gonna insert it in post-production, maybe with a cool effect like, like this. First, I know what a lot of you are going to say. Why should I listen to advice from you about food? You're fat as shit. I am aware of that. I look like Mac in season seven of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, but that's not because I eat the wrong foods, I just eat too much, because that's the number one cause of being overweight, it's eating too much, it doesn't really matter what you're eating, if you ingest too many calories and have a life that is too sedentary, you are gonna get fat 100% guaranteed. Although, I had extensive blood tests, everything, they uh, tests uh, they they tested my blood. They tasted my piss. They tasted. They tested my piss. Maybe they tasted it. I don't know. I just gave them the cup. I'm not sure what they did with it afterwards. But <laughs> and I am a hundred percent perfectly healthy, basically, despite being overweight. To be more precise, my BMI is 28. My waistline is 113 centimeters, so that's not exactly obesity, but close to it, but I do not have metabolic syndrome at all. If you don't know what metabolic syndrome is, Google it. Uh, I don't have a drop of extra cholesterol, my HDL is normal, my LDL is low, I don't have extra blood sugar, my, my blood sugar is perfectly fine, all my hormones are right in the middle of the normal zone. I don't know if you remember the scene at the beginning of Idiocracy with the military library dude, but everything about me is perfectly average, right in the middle of the normal zone. They should call me Goldilocks. Second of all, I am not a medical professional. I just have a lot of knowledge because as the title of the video suggests, I am kind of a nerd. I have read uh, thousands and thousands of, of studies, of double-blind experiments, of randomized controlled trials, and meta-analyses. I don't know what the, the plural of analysis is, but uh, I have read a lot of that shit. Uh, during the, the past years, I have been absolutely obsessed for no specific reasons uh, about food and nutrition, or also cooking, but that's not the point of this video. And I, I have, yeah, obsessively read and gathered data and information and all the facts I could find and fact check them and fact checked my fact checking. So I have acquired a, a lot of knowledge and of, of course I want to share it with you. Remember Ty Lopez, no, knowledge is important, more important than Lamborghinis in it. So uh, let's um, start this video now. I'm going to start with why are so many studies conflicting in nutrition? Why is nutrition so confusing? Why can it be just straightforward? I want to know what foods are good for me and what foods are bad. Well, if that is your mindset, you're fucking lost because every Food is composed by hundreds, if not thousands, of molecules that will all likely have a different effect on your health. Chocolate has iron in it, which is good for you, but chocolate also has sugar, not very good if you eat too much of it, although it is harmless in small amounts. The point is, it's like that for every food item, for everything, vegetables, fish, 
beverages, everything has some good and some bad and some stuff that does nothing and some stuff that we're not quite so sure about. There's no way you're gonna have a clear cut answer on what foods are good for you and what foods are, are bad because basically there's no such thing. Hey yo, I'm the new guy, they call me Brad Margarita, in charge of editing and, and quality control. What Chad forgot to tell you is that if someone is trying to pretend like some food, whether it's like chocolate or wine or bread or fucking whatever tofu, uh, if someone is telling you that a specific food is healthy or unhealthy and you, that you should definitely eat it, or definitely avoid it if someone is making like a clear cut, really simplified uh, claim like this, they're most likely a scoundrel trying to sell you some bullshit. It could be like uh, like uh, some pharmaceutical company trying to sell you uh, a miracle cure uh, against aging or fuck whatever, or it could most likely be a journalist uh, who is trying to um, sell your your soul and mind to advertisers and corporations, and uh, it's it's always going to be complicated and confusing. But there's some safe bets, you know. Like for example, if you're if you're healthy and you don't have any particular health issues, then most likely you've been doing it right. And if you're healthy, you're you're not going to get healthier, you know? There's no such thing as better health than health. If you're healthy, you're there. Alcohol is, is basically a toxin, but if you have one glass of wine once in a while, there's no way it, it's going to harm you, you know? And uh, let's talk about wine. Wine is good. There's a lot of studies, especially from the 70s, 70s, were the dark ages of nutrition. It's when people were trying to reinvent everything, and you know, in terms of food, cooking, and nutrition, 70s were really the fucking dark ages. Uh, there's so much myths that come from this uh, dreaded era, you know, the, the, the hippie dark ages, we're gonna call them. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> Wine is not especially good for you. There's nothing really in a wine that will make you healthier. This comes from a, a, a thing called the French paradox. You see, in the 70s, a lot of people, for, for some fucking reason, I don't even know what, um, decided that fat was the enemy. A bunch of people decided, just like that, that fat was the enemy and that you should eat as little fat as possible, you should avoid fat, you know? And so they've looked at a bunch of um, nations and, and, and ethnicities around the world who ate low fat and were really healthy, so that made them content. But in France, we do eat a, a very high amount of fat, and yet, we have one of the best health in the world, one of the lowest percentage of, of, of you know, metabolic disease, and one of the longest life expectancies. But we do eat a lot of olive oil, butter, duck fat, beef tallow, bacon, all that, and for, of course, <laughs> cheese. So, what do these uh, 70s people decided that something in the French diet must act as a counter poison to all this fat to protect the people from the harmful effect of fats. And so they've decided that it must be red wine. And that that's how this whole myth started, and of course it has been debunked a fuck ton of times, but it is really hard because the boomers do love their wine, especially like what we what we know as the, the Facebook moms, they, they do drink a lot of wine, and, and so uh, they cling onto that fucking myth. I mean, it's not 
really bad for you either, unless you guzzle a couple of bottles every day, of course, but there's nothing magic uh, in wine for your health. If you drink it and you think it's going to make you healthier, uh, stop. Drink it if you like the taste. That's it. That's the only good reason, really. Um, what else? Oh, so much things I could talk about. Um, how about fats? A lot of people lately have been talking and asking about the ketogenic diet. Finally, one diet that doesn't try to sell us bullshit and you don't have to take any specific supplements. You just eat high fat, low carb, and it's gonna make you skinnier and healthier and more energetic. Does it really work? Well, it kind of works, actually, yes, but not for the reason that you might think. Let's back up a little. There has been a lot of studies about people eating too much and being fat and then trying to diet and then failing to lose fat, but they were restricting their calories. So it's calories in, calories out, right? It should be as simple as that. If you eat fewer calories than your body needs, if you eat fewer calories than you are burning, then you should get slimmer. Well, yes, that is indeed how it works. There's zero doubt about this. So, what happened? Well, what happened is that people are extremely bad at counting how many calories they eat in a day. And I know, I've done it, I've tried, it's hard. Sometimes, often times, you forget to count snacks, for example. Hey, it's, it's just a yogurt. Hey, it's just a, a, it's just a couple apples. It's, it's fruit, it's natural. And like that, there's in some cases, up to 50% half of the calories that you eat in a day that you don't count or that you don't even realize that you don't count. These people who were doing these self-reporting studies, they weren't intentionally lying. They weren't being deceptive, maybe a little lazy, but not, not that much. There's the thing in the human brain we are all afraid of starving, not in our consciousness, but inside of us. You know, that's normal. So what the scientists did, they took a few people in a, a locked apartment, like one of those reality shows, you know. They were in, inside locked apartments. They couldn't get out. They had to live in these apartments for a whole month. You know, and their only duty was to report in a, in a notebook or a computer, I don't remember, but they had to write down everything that they ate and put the calorie count in the, the let's say it's a notebook, okay? So the scientists were observing them with cameras. 24 hours out of 24, seven days out of seven, and, and that was part of the experiment. The people knew! The people knew that they were being filmed and observed all the time. And what happened, they still underreported their food intake by a lot. All of them! The, the old people, the young people, the women, the men, Everyone underreported by an average of 30% per day, I think. Like almost one third of the calories in the food they ate in a day didn't get to the notebook. 
It's, it does seem crazy because they knew they were being observed. They knew everything was being tracked. They knew, and they didn't know what the point of the study was. It was just supposed to be a study about nutrition. They didn't know the details, you know. And um, it was supposed to be a, a study about nutrition and dieting, and that's it. And everyone underreported their calories by a fucked on. So, what does this mean about the ketogenic diet? Because I was starting to talk about the ketogenic diet. What does this have to do with it? Well, when you are in the ketogenic diet, you are uh, forbidden to eat a lot of foods that you normally eat, like bread, potatoes, rice, uh, all, all the carbs, basically, that, that, that you eat uh, every day and that are a, a staple of many diets around the world, forbidden. You have to be really, really attentive to what you're consuming because a lot of foods, especially foods that you buy in the supermarket, have hidden carbs. So basically, you have to really scrutinize everything you're eating. Because of that, you know exactly how many calories you eat in a day. So that makes the crucial element in the ketogenic diet, calorie restriction, work better because you really know how many calories you eat in a day. So you don't really unconsciously cheat on your diet. And that, that is why it works. It's because caloric restriction, every other diet that works, works because of caloric restriction. There's one way of to lose weight, it's to eat less. That's it. There's no food that will magically make you burn fat faster. And the difference in metabolism between people exists, but they are tiny, tiny, tiny. So tiny that they basically have no consequence on your weight, your ability to focus and to look at what you're doing and, you tr and to track accurately the foods that you eat. That's the one thing that has uh, a real influence on your weight, you know? And of course, you, you gotta have the, the... That's what I don't have, that's why I'm fat. You gotta have the, the discipline to, you know, restrict your caloric intake. I, I've tried and I always cave in after like 48 hours, usually. Um, you know, I know the theory. That's, that doesn't mean that I'm gonna to apply it, but I, I'd rather exercise a lot to burn more calories even if it's not a good way to lose weight, because even if you exercise real hard, like if you do something like powerlifting, which is like lifting really heavy weights, you don't lift these weights for a really long time. Because like, let's say you're trying to do a, a really heavy deadlift, you're gonna have to have the weight up like for 30 seconds in total, you've gotta, if you do powerlifting, you gotta have a lot of rest between exercises and between sets. And uh, usually a session is like 45 minutes in total. You're maybe exercising for 20 minutes, three times a week. That's not gonna burn a lot of calories. Usually powerlifters uh, burn 200, 250 calories per day, that's one donut. That's a couple bananas. That's, that, <laughs> it's so much easier to intake food than to burn it through exercise. Uh, even if you're like running a marathon, you're not gonna burn a lot of calories. There's no way you're gonna burn a lot of calories. It's just, you, you cannot burn. So so much because after a while you're just gonna get exhausted and you're, you'll have to stop exercising and you risk overtraining and you risk injuries so you'll stay in bed and you'll like exercise less 
and you know, uh, reducing your food intake is really the I'm gonna say the easiest, the simplest way, the most the most efficient way of losing weight if, by a fucking landslide. Like there's no dispute. What else? Let's go to something else. Um, uh, the paleo diet. Does it have any, you know, merit? Because it's basically trying to make you eat like cavemen before uh, agriculture was invented. There's a lot of myths and rumors going around saying that we haven't evolutionarily adapted to eating grains. Ha! Huh! We've found actually a lot of skeletons, I, I, uh, 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 you know, archaeological findings of um, human tribes or, you know, hominid, uh, you know, uh, ancient humans way before agriculture, like tens of thousands of years before we already ate a shitload of grains. We've all, always done that since since we, we, you know, departed from the monkey branch thing. <clears throat> Not good at phylogenesis, but you, you get what I mean. Uh, eat grains. It's not bad for you. Yes, we are adapted to, eat, to eating them. Wheat is not bad for you. As, except if you have gluten intolerance, but that has to be checked by a medical professional, like a real one, not a naturopath, which is just a fancy word for bullshit, piece of shit, cunt, quack, a real doctor, and for pretty much everyone, wheat is good, wheat is safe, um, there is a difference of, in nutrition between whole grain cereal and normal cereal, but it is tiny, 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 so tiny that it does not matter. Whole grain is technically healthier than normal grain, but by such a small amount that it's negligible, really. Uh, oh, by the way, this reminds me of the food pyramid. The food pyramid. Um, real or bullshit? Well, the food pyramid was invented, you guess it, in the 70s. The, the dreaded 70s. Great music, terrible science, the 70s. Um, there's a reason why the food pyramid was invented. It was invented in Sweden. And in the 70s in Sweden, there was a huge inflation and economic crisis problem. So they invented the food pyramid to tell people how to eat on a small budget. It's meant to be used as a reference for saving money. Does it have anything to do with health? No. Does, does it? But, 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 no. No, 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 no. You're not supposed to. Uh, also, it has been modified so many times, sometimes by uh, lobbies, you know, especially if you live in the USA, uh, you're basically ruled by lobbies. And it's also true in Europe, although to a lesser extent, but yeah, um, the, the food pyramid is ah, that's absolute bullshit. That makes me think about breakfast. Oh, people are saying breakfast, the most important meal of the day. How true is that? Not at all. Uh, this myth started... This is so fucking stupid. There's been... Uh, um, I don't think TV was common at that time, because it was like 100 years ago, but a radio ad that said... Uh, like, s s the slogan was something like, Oh, uh, this new breakfast cereal is so good that it will make breakfast the most important meal of your day. You know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a good slogan. But somehow it got into the collective consciousness and people, you know, it, be it became a meme, really. A, a meme. 
totally people were using breakfast the most important meal of the day as, as a joke as a meme and they keep repeating it and it stuck somehow a hundred fucking years and people nowadays some people I, I know it's not that common I, I, but still uh, there's breakfast is not special and there's actually been a huge study recently about is it good to eat breakfast in the morning or shall you not eat breakfast in the morning and there's been like there's, there's some fucking hard science was thrown at this they make like a really large study with a lot of participants and you know i think it was like a randomized control trial and and then there was another double blind experiment and then they did a meta analysis like really fucking and the findings <laughs> the findings of that massive fucking study uh, are so if you are hungry in the morning then you should eat breakfast if you are not hungry in the morning, then you should not. <laughs> Is it as simple and stupid as that? Yeah. Yeah, really. If you are not hungry in the morning and you force yourself to eat breakfast, it's gonna be bad for you. And if you are hungry in the morning but you skip breakfast because you're in a hurry or whatever, it's gonna be bad for you. If you're hungry, you should eat. If you're not hungry, you should not eat. That is actually a really, really great rule for everyday life. If you're hungry, you should eat. If you're not hungry, you shouldn't. Uh, that works extremely well on most situations.